This fizzcast will be a conceptual discussion on electric flux through a surface and how it relates to the enclosed charge. This is of course very important when it comes to understanding Gauss's law in electromagnetism. We won't be doing any detailed calculations and for our purposes we can simply think of the electric flux as telling us something about the number of field lines that pass through a surface. Let's begin by remembering what field lines are telling us and we'll start with a simple point charge here that might have some positive charge Q on it. Electric field lines indicate the direction of a force on a positive test charge and by symmetry we know that for a point charge there will essentially be field lines radiating out uniformly in all directions. So we might indicate something like that. The field lines are pointing away because a positive test charge would feel a repulsive force from our positive charge in the center here. Now if we were to consider some closed surface and for the time being we're going to be drawing in two dimensions but realistically we should be imagining this to be an enclosed surface in three dimensions. Here might be some surface we could imagine there and what we'd like to know is something about the electric flux here. And again by our definition we can simply figure out how many field lines are pointing through that surface. So we could go around and we could add up here's a field line pointing to the surface, here's another one, etc, etc. Essentially every field line that comes off our charge will be poking out through that surface. And we would say here that the flux we have here, let's call it flux 1 for this particular example, here would be a positive quantity. What if we had a charge that was twice as large as the one we started with? So this now has twice the charge on it. What that means is if we consider the field lines coming off, we indicate field strength in our diagrams by the spacing of the field lines. So if this charge was twice as large, it would have twice as many field lines coming from it as indicated here. And what that means is now any surface that we imagined uh, enclosing that charge, here's the surface here, you'd go around and you would count up all the points where a field line was poking through the surface. And once again, all of them will poke through the surface. And we could imagine here that we would have, again, a positive electric flux. In fact, it would be equal to twice the electric flux we had in our first case. There are twice as many field lines poking through it. If instead of a positive charge, we had a negative charge. We know charge comes in two possible signs. The symmetry of our situation doesn't change. We will still have field lines uniformly spaced in all directions, except now a positive test charge would be attracted towards our charge. And so our field lines will now point inwards towards the charge. If we were to imagine a surface now that enclosed that charge, as indicated there, again, every field line that's heading towards that charge will pierce through that surface. But now instead of moving out of the surface, it's moving in. There's a field line in, there's a field line in. And we say that when it pokes in towards the surface, that actually contributes a negative flux. And we'd say in this example here, that our flux, if we wanted to call it flux 3, will now be a negative quantity. And so already we can see some interesting things about the flux through a surface and the charge that's enclosed. Remember we had this as a positive charge in the middle, we had a positive flux through the surface. If we had twice as much charge inside, we had twice the flux. If we had a negative charge inside the surface, we had a negative flux. And so the indication here is there's a relationship between the amount of charge that's enclosed by the surface and the flux of electric field lines, the electric flux through that surface. Let's consider a slightly different situation where once again we have our charge here and we have the field line surrounding it. But now let's consider a surface that actually doesn't enclose the charge. Maybe a surface over here, for example. There's a reasonable surface, but in fact the charge doesn't sit inside that. When we think about the flux of the electric field lines through this surface, we certainly have some field lines that are leaving. These over here would be contributing positively to our flux. But for every field line that leaves, there's a field line that enters. 
and we know that contributes negatively to the flux. So in fact, there's an exact balance for every field line that enters, there must be a field line that leaves. Remember, electric field lines can only begin or end upon a charge. If there's no charge inside our surface, the field lines can't begin or end in there. So any field line that enters must also leave. And in this case, the flux through that surface must be identically zero. Again, this works quite nicely in that the enclosed charge for this surface is also zero. Now, when it comes to actually calculating the electric flux, we have to be very careful about the nature of the surface and the normal to that surface, something at right angles to that surface, relative to the direction of the electric field. And that's a, a reasonably complicated calculation that can be simplified enormously, as you'll see in calculations, if we take into account the symmetry of the situation. So if we were, in this particular case, to draw a perfect circle centered on the charge, then indeed at every point where the field line crosses, it will be exactly parallel to the normal to that surface. But the important point we've been discussing here is the relationship between the electric flux through a surface and the electric charge that's enclosed by the surface, allowing us to write that this electric flux will be proportional to the enclosed charge by the surface.